Quick disclaimer, this tutorial is recorded using the default settings for Mad Pro, which means that the UI was set to the default UI, and all the defaults remain like this, and the key binding remains unchanged. Hello and welcome to this Mad Pro tutorial. This is a scene I quickly made earlier today, so that everything will be all set up. It's a sync. Um, and we're going to jump straight into it. So because I have an idea of what I want, I find it easier to just add a domain object. And because this is a sink, we're going to use a liquid. And we'll just um, lower this down to a little bit below the bottom of the sink. That should be fine. Let's scale it down a ways. Don't need it to be that tall. Something like that. We'll leave it like that. Um, and now we want to add a emission object, and we'll we'll use a UV sphere because I think that'll be the simplest. Let's move it up to the general right place. And position it about where we want it, like that. Then we'll just head down here and do the flow and select liquid. I'm just going to uh, disable that, and then using the shortcut control R, we can actually start to see. We have a liquid. But right now it's falling right through the sink, so we're going to want to fix that. So we'll select that and select it as an effector. A collision, and we'll just see if that works by itself. And it appears to actually be working. Hey! That's nice. One thing I like to do is set the simulation speed to something higher for reviewing. Uh, of course, now we get that. That can be fixed by increasing the resolutions. 64, I think. But it's also a nice result, as you can see, it's slower in the viewport. We can see. Much easier what's happening. We have a lot of splashing right now. Like that's that's not good. So I'm actually going to keep it at that for now. But uh, there are two ways we can experiment with this. We can either turn down the flip ratio or set it to the other simulation method. I'll try that one first. That might look better for a sink. Yeah, I think I like that one. I think that'll work best. So now we're going to add a little bit of initial velocity. Just go out here, click that. So we set that, and we want it to be. So it looks like along the y-axis here, and judging by that, it's in the negative direction, so we'll just do negative 2, I guess, and see how that looks. That looks like way too much. That's negative 1. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Also, I think I'm going to put that a little higher up in there. Seems to look pretty good there. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. Uh, just to let you know, this scene is lit with an HDRI from HDRI Haven, and the materials uh, were purchased online, so I will not be providing this file, at least with the materials. 
So now we have that. Let's uh, look about baking, I guess. So by default, the cache type is the replay method. There's the module replay method, which requires you to bake the data. And then the mesh in order for you to see results, uh, both of which are resumable. Uh, if the resumable is on. And then there's the all method, which is very convenient, especially since they added the uh, resumable feature. So we can just press that and wait for it to bake. Okay, we seem to be uh, done with the baking now. And as we can see, we can scroll through and we can see it goes all the way to where it's filled up there. And we'll go about here, I guess, and go into render view. Uh, this is using cycles. Also, go over an Eevee and waiting for the uh, shaders to compile. There we go. Uh, in Eevee, um, if I want to set up the material for Eevee, pressing that button, and then you'll have a water that looks pretty good. Um, the volume is if we go back to cycles you can see we have volume color that is cycles only uh, currently we might unlock that depending on what ended up in blender 3.0 or not so if th this looks pretty nice we can uh, change it so like actually i do think i prefer a little bit more volume density so that it gets just a little bit more blue. Uh, we have the roughness. We can make it look kind of frosted, but we don't want that. The main color. If we want to end up the volume color, we want to do that. But by default, everything seems to be looking actually quite nice. But this was a quick uh, demo and. Often when building a fluid simulation, you'll run into other issues that you'll have to work around or try to fix. I'll have a separate tutorial on how to address some of those. So right now we have that little circle there. Forgot to turn that off under the flow, display. We can set disable and renders, and if we actually render out the image, that will not appear. Uh, but we can also just set it as a transparent material. Which means that now it just doesn't show up. Also, real quick, noticing that it just tends to blend in a bit up there, so I might just drop the volume color, lower the density now that we have like that. I think I liked it before better. One last tip, um, if ever you're working with fluid simulation, it is often very helpful to read uh, the descriptions for properties. So when you hover over one, you'll get a description. For example, the uh, liquid resolution is the particle number factor, higher value still in more particles or maximum resolutions, resolutions used for the fluid domain, and all that. And if you don't know what a property does, it can often be a very quick way to determine what it does and which direction to change the property to get what you want. So that's it for this tutorial. Thank you all for watching.